hi everybody welcome back to my channel or welcome if this is your first time here it's been a while we're trying something new i am making a floral arrangement for my mom this was for mother's day i have a piece of foam in a milk glass reproduction i'm gonna say it looks like milk glass uh, it had a seam i don't think it actually is i got it at a little antique thrifty store uh, i'm starting off with some mandarin honeysuckle as part of my greenery Everything in this arrangement is growing in my yard, except for some roses that I use later on. So I'm taking the mandarin honeysuckle and I'm just kind of trying to figure out my shape. I want it to be higher on the left and then it comes down on the right. Kind of one-sided, but um, I think it ended up being where you could look at it from any side and it was fine because I put so much stuff in it. So this mandarin honeysuckle is growing on a gate near my house. Um, it, it does not want to go away. I would sometimes like it to go away because it's filled with this weird weed that just takes it over and kills half of it. And oh. if I can use it for something other than just being all over the fence and getting filled with weeds and I'm okay with it. And you saw I was uh, massaging the stem a little bit there to get a little curve in it. You can't do that with everything, but sometimes, sometimes you can kind of uh, mold those stems into what you want them to be. So you can see it's starting to take shape with the higher side on the left, and then it's kind of coming down and around on the right. And I like this because it kind of looks like eucalyptus, maybe kind of. And now we're going to get a little wild. I have two tomatoes that I planted that are, they're crazy. They're indeterminate, so they just keep growing. I have cut them back three times already, and it's not even the end of May. Uh, so I have a lot of pieces that I feel bad if they have flowers or fruit on them, and I have to cut them back. So I stick them in water. They eventually root, and I can plant them out. But what I'm doing here is using them in the arrangement because after a week, in this arrangement when everything else is you know on the way out the tomato plants will have formed roots and if you wanted to plant them you could my mom didn't but it's just it's a nice different texture uh, it was free it was going to go in the garbage so i stuck it in here and i like the little immature tomatoes kind of hanging off the side This is some star jasmine. It's mostly new uh, growth. You can see the, the leaves on the end are really tiny. This is also growing on my fence. And earlier this spring, I, um, let's see how to put this, uh, mowed it down as far as I could uh, with a pair of hedge clippers. And then I went on the other side of the fence and mowed it down some more. And then I sprayed it. Um, with dead weed brew and then I sprayed it with uh, vinegar and um, I have, I've done everything besides setting it on fire and uh, yeah. So if I can use it for a floral arrangement, why not? I don't know what this is. This is growing in the lot next to my house. It's coming out of a tree, a tree stump. There was a giant oak tree that got cut down for no good reason and this is like growing around it. I don't know what it is. It has these little white flowers on the end. Thought it was cute. It did not last in the vase and neither did, I mean, the jasmine kind of did, but not really. And I know the use of floral foam may be somewhat controversial, but uh, I just did my third arrangement in this same piece of foam, so. Ideally, I would like to be using some chicken wire as a frog to hold the flowers in place, but it's not always possible when you're using something that's kind of squat like this vase. Yeah, I did like this. I did like this kind of flowery white thing, whatever that was. And I, I tend to, when I'm doing a floral arrangement, I really like to get my base in there first and establish my shape. And we used to call this greening when I worked at a florist, where you put all your green stuff in and then it covers up all your mechanics, like the foam, and then you put your flowers on top of it so they stand out more.
And if I'm doing an arrangement where I'm using chicken wire as a frog or an actual frog as a frog or tape as a grid, I'm not as concerned with covering every inch of the inside of the vase, I guess, where the foam is. When I'm using foam, I gotta cover that up. I can't be seeing that. But that's looking good. This is coleus. I have this planted all over my yard. Coleus is one of my favorite things to plant. Just because I, I don't grow up with the flowers. I just love the leaves. This one does have some flowers on it. And this is currently sitting on my windowsill. This piece of uh, coleus sitting on my windowsill in a glass of water with roots ready to go back in the yard. I like the idea of making a floral arrangement that has something in it that's going to grow later. So like, you know, you're going to a, a house for a dinner party, whatever, and you want to bring, you say, oh, do I bring the flowers? Do I bring the plant? This way you do both because the tomatoes and the coleus and, is that it? Yeah. Those are, those are going to form roots and you can plant them out later. This sunflower was a little old, so I plucked all the petals off and I'm just going to use it as a textural element. Because the head is still pretty. See, in another arrangement y'all are going to see later, I used coleus and mint and something else. And I took that one apart yesterday at my mom's house because it was, she's ready for a new one. Um, and everything had roots on it. So she's now able to take that piece of mint that was used as filler and she'll plant it in a pot and then she'll be able to grow her own mint. I have probably, uh, I have a couple of giant, um, it's, I think it's apple mint. You, if you're buying one to harvest for cut flowers, you can look for ones that grow straight, you know, in like stalks instead of a creeping mint, like a spearmint or a wintergreen mint or something like that. So I think this is apple mint. This is an El Dorado Zinnia. I got these from Baker Creek Seeds. I don't know why I have so many of them. Like there's a lot of them growing in my yard. I guess very high germination rate. So I'm still establishing that line where it goes up on the right, down on the left. This is an Eldorado again. I find zinnias kind of hard to work with. You have to harvest them when you can grab the bottom of the stem and wiggle it and the top doesn't flop back and forth all over the place because that top part of the stem right underneath the flower is hollow. So you want to get that as firm as you can, but there's like, I feel like there's a, um, a very small window between when you can harvest the flower and keep it in a vase for seven days and when you can harvest the flower and it's going to fall apart the next day. And these are hard to put in foam because that top part is hollow. So if you pinch that and try to squeeze it down, you're going to end up crimping the stem and killing the, killing the flower before it's ready, you know? before it's time comes. This is a, hmm, Queen Violet maybe? I have two big zinnia beds and they are just full of the Eldorados and these purple ones. There's other ones planted in there. They, these, are, these are the ones that just bloom first. I don't know if I planted them early, like su succession planting, but. And more of that white stuff. And this arrangement lasts about seven to nine days. The zinnias last for a very long time. The greenery is what usually goes first. But like yesterday I had, I was by my mom's and she had an arrangement that I made her, the one with the mint. And it was not looking great. Some of the zinnias had faded. Some of them looked fine. Some of them, you know, were on their way out. So I took it all apart, threw away all the stuff that was gone and made her another smaller arrangement in a little 
smaller base of the stuff that was left and the stuff that we were propagating so she could plant later. But yeah, this El Dorado is, it's kind of like a peachy orange. It's really pretty. I think most of my zinnias I bought like in, you know, Home Depot, Lowe's, Walmart, whatever, but the El Dorado had to come from Baker's Creek because it's more of a um, specialty zinnia is a little bit more expensive. The seeds. All right, so this is where we're at. These little orange things on the end of the honeysuckle, they fall off pretty quickly too, but they last a while. I just noticed there's four purple zinnias forming a square in there, and I don't like that. All right, see the roots on there? That was ready to go out in the garden. And I could still put that piece that I cut off in there, but I think I ended up throwing it away because I don't need any more tomatoes. I have more tomatoes than I can eat now, and it's only May. So see, there's a couple of little tomatoes hanging off the edge of that stem. I like that. There you go. That's the, that's the roots. And these are just the, the little scissors from Dollar Tree. I have 42 pairs of them. I can only find one. Does that, does that happen to anybody else? So there's some little tomatoes hanging off the edge of there too. Super cute. And then I'm just using the rest of this to kind of fill in on the back. My mom is not the biggest fan of the tomato smell. I kind of like it. I mean, I like the texture the leaves give and they last for a while. You know, they'll, they'll end up growing roots in the water, like I said. Um, but they do have that tomato plant smell. Not necessarily a tomato smell, a tomato plant smell. I have four rose bushes in my garden right now and none of them were blooming at the time. They had already gone through their first flush of blooms. So... My mom likes yellow, and uh, that's what I got. And you're going to hear me loudly blowing into these uh, roses because they were very tight. And I was making this either the Saturday before Mother's Day or the Sunday morning. It might have been Sunday morning. No, I made it the night before. I remember now. Um, I'm blowing these because they're, they were very tight, which is how you want to buy roses when you're going to put them in a vase and let them open. But if you're putting them in an arrangement, and I'm going to give this to my mom, I don't want to give her an arrangement that has a bunch of really tight roses in it when they're supposed to be, you know, pretty open up. Am I moving that? No. Okay. I got excited for a second. And I did buy these, obviously. I have a really, really light pink... The roses that I planted this year, I bought them based on the pictures, and I was like, oh, that one's so pretty, that one's so pretty. Neither one of them came up the color they were supposed to be. I mean, they're close, but one of them is supposed to be like a silvery lavender, um, like a, like, like a mid-tone purpley, light purple lavender silver color, and it's just like pastel purple. And then one of them was supposed to be a yellow and... A, a buttery yellow and like a coral pink color and it is just straight up like ballet pink but they're pretty and you know they're they're climbing along my fence right now and I assume in the next couple months they'll kind of take it over and then I won't have to look at the neighbor's yard anymore which would be fantastic so these are just kind of I mean they're roses but I'm kind of using them as filler because I have the most of them. This was still pretty early. I mean, it was the beginning of May, so I didn't have a, a ton to choose from in my garden. 
you know, these, I mean, I, I picked everything because I sent this to my sister and she wanted me to make another one for her girlfriend. And I was just like, hey, I picked everything. Like everything that I could pick is in here. But like right now, since it's the end of May, it's a lot hotter. The days are longer and warmer. Um, I can probably get an arrangement every two days out of my garden. But I'm having a problem with like, okay, I have a rose and the rose is good and the zinnias are good and I can get coleus, but I have a, you know, I'll have like, I have a dahlia that's almost open and I really want to cut it, but it needs like another day. But I also have gladiolus that opened two days ago and I need to use them before they open up too much and then I can't use them at all. So I'm having a problem with everything being ready at the same time. But I think it, it just makes me stretch creatively to figure out how to use everything together. At some point, did I move a zinnia? Oh, it's kind of bent down now, I see it. And I'm bending it back up, fantastic. See how that one's kind of wobbly? I think I pinched the, yeah, I pinched the stem on that one. That's probably the first, the first one that came out, you know, after a couple of days. Is that it? I think so. That's pretty. Proud of myself. See, so yeah, I mostly foraged. Spent ten dollars to get the flo the roses, um, and everything else I grew. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. Um, links are down below in the description, and I will see you later. Glad to be back. I missed you guys. Bye bye.